Right, is this thing on? I think we're good. No one's here yet, but I'm going to welcome you to the Global Maker Fest sponsored by Arbor Tech. Today is Saturday. It is 3 p.m. Eastern Central Time, and we are just starting our stream right now. And uh, you hear that noise in the background? That is Advanced Maker power carving with the power chisel. He is nine years old, and I trust him to use that tool safely. I can walk away and let him do stuff, and I'll show you all about it. Hopefully the sound won't be too bad. Very funny, Mike. <laughs> What's going on, Peter? Hey, Vance, you want to turn that off for a sec? You know, let's turn that off for a second and say hi. What's up? Paul Jackman wants to know how old you are. Nine. Nine? When did you turn ten? Um, let me check the date. Um, 22 days. So, you're... Make sure you talk loud because you're a little further away from this than me so they can hear you. So twenty in 22 days, Vance turns 10, so I think that makes him, what, six months older than you, Paul? <laughs> six and a half. So, show us what you're working on. Uh, so I'm making a marble maze with the Arbitec, um power chisel. So I'm just going around and cleaning up the corners and making it at a downhill slope. So I'm, as you can see, I'm going to make this wider probably and I'm gonna take care of these rough edges and clean it up and by the time I'm done it should be basically like sanded smooth yeah so this is what is this your first time using the power chisel um I used it for like a couple minutes at uh Maker Faire in Massachusetts yeah Troy is on the chat right now he just said hi oh what's up so anyway is um I'm getting pretty good at this um getting the hang of it i just like really started using it today but it's pretty easy and i started this marble maze and did some tests on a piece of wood and i'm messing around with different bits and stuff here let's um let's take the tool off for a second well here i'm going to show the tool real quick so um this is a power chisel and the first time i saw one of these in a video i thought that's sort of ridiculous like why would you need an electric chisel and, um, and then I use it and I was like, oh, it has nothing to do with a chisel. It's like its own thing, really. Um, so it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Basically, it's a, you know, there's some kind of reduction thing in here that turns this angle grinder spinner into like a jackhammer motion. I don't know, it's magic. There's magic pixies in there, I think, yes. right? Magic pixies. Magic gears. Um, so, but what's really cool about it, um, if you turn it on, and you're not going to be able to hear me for a second while I talk, but if you turn it on, it's totally safe. You'll see, I'll touch my hand to it. And it's only when you actually apply pressure to it. So you can see that little thing there. That's, what, in a little bit. that's when it engages. So. Okay. Right. But then, when you engage it, it's 
So that is what I love about this tool in particular is that it's super safe and I can take a nine-year-old who has some basic understanding of tools and safety and I can turn my back on him with this and not worry about it. I'm, I have no concerns about Vance injuring himself at all. He knows to make sure his work is clamped down. He knows to be wearing his hearing protection while he's running it. We don't even need a dust mask because they're like gold these days and um, it doesn't really make dust. It just makes chips. So and they he needs... Yeah, and he needs eye protection, which for this, it doesn't have a lot of crazy flying stuff. So I don't make him put the goggles on. If he were using something a little more aggressive like this, talk about some of these other tools, I would make him put the proper the proper safety glasses on. But just his regular glasses for this is fine because it's not sending chips flying everywhere. I haven't had one hit me in the face yet, and I don't think it will. Right. I mean, honestly, you should be wearing the They're proper safety, safety protection. Sorry. but. But I don't worry about it with this tool. I totally, I totally trust you um, to use this tool safely. But now, before you finish this back up, I want to show everybody the invention that we came up with. So, you want to grab a marble? Uh, yeah, sure. I used little or big? Um, maybe big, I guess, so we don't lose as fast. Vance and I were trying to come up with a project that we could do quickly out in the yard for uh this arbortech event and thank you arbortech for putting this on it's been really interesting to see well, let me get it i'm in the shadow let's go ahead and set it up yeah i need to clean it up there yeah let's but but we'll yeah there you go I'm a little steeper uh oh. too steep when i went back in it yeah. kind of got rougher so yeah but you can also rock the board a little bit yeah go ahead it kind of got rougher when i went in yeah, so, you're learning how to use the tool. No, but like when I went in again, I tried to make it deeper, but then it just got messed up, so now I have to fix it all again. Right, so you're going to go over and do like a finish pass where you go nice and smooth and light all the way around and do what would be called a finish pass. Yeah, first I have to fix this, mm. and then I'll do a finish yep. pass. So this is just an old um, kitchen table I pulled off the side of the road. It's just a piece of an old table. And, um, you know, so I this is... Go. This is like a no money kid project. You can take this piece of wood and there's no guilt, a piece of scrap plywood or whatever. And, and you can give a child this chisel, in my opinion, a child that has some understanding of tools and, and woodworking and safety. You know, like someone like Vance who I trust. There's this pit right here. Like if you run your finger in it, it just gets deep and then high again. Mm. So I'm gonna try and level that. Well, yeah, yeah, and we had some other ideas too. We were thinking about making it more like a labyrinth so you could actually like play it. And we were thinking about trying to carve down really deep so we could put a piece of plexiglass over it and actually like make it a, an actual like marble maze. But just for the sake of demonstration here, we're not worrying about all that stuff. So the other thing we did is I wanted to make a pocket for it to go in. Well, I drew a circle and I drew the squiggly and I made Vance follow it to practice his, his technique instead of him just making his own lines. And then what I did to hog this out real quick was I used this mini turbo plane that Arbortech has. Um, and this is a tool now, again, I mean, these are all safe if you use them properly. This is something that I advanced use and he has used, but only under proper guidance because this has these very sharp carbide bits and they're spinning around. But so I use that real quickly to just hollow out that little pocket right there for the marble to go into. And um, Vince, you want to go back to, to finishing this up? Yeah, sure. And do you, you want to change bits in the... Um... Yes. And we could um, show them how to change bits. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, actually, I should put a little oil in there, too. Oh, good idea. So, you just press that button in, yep. and the bit will slide right out. And, um... Troy, he's coming for you, man. He's coming for your job, Troy. Actually, I would like that. Um, but... Okay, let's pick a bit. Yes, Joe, it is pressure activated. Here. So, and then when you just want to put the bit hey, in... yellow mug. I'm just saying hi. I'm sorry. Easy. Just slide it right in. Yep, and it locks right into and place. Then there's the pressure. Oh, and you know what? Do me a favor and explain and then show the trick you discovered. Troy, are you ready for this? What you... about the oil? Oh yeah, do the oil first. Okay. Sorry, I jumped I jumped steps. Dad, we don't want to wreck our tool here. So there's this little bottle. You should put oil in like every oil hole. Every 15, 20 minutes. Let it Two drops in there. Mm -hmm. 20, 15 minutes of using it. Yeah, obviously not 20 minutes of it sitting on the shelf. <laughs> okay, now Vance. Hey, oh, hey, Colby's here. He says, hey, Vance. Hey, Tim. Hey, hey Colby. 
No, you can't have that mask, Mike. That mask is worth 50 bucks. Um, okay. Now, Troy from Arbor Tech, I don't know if you even know this trick, but Vance just came up with it and it floored me. Now, there's a very fast motor spinning in this, as we know, because it's... It has a fan. And there's the, the fan. It blows air. So I was showing Vance to keep his work clean, and I kept showing I was like, okay, so then, you know, pick the pick the tool up and brush it with your hand or get a little broom or blow on it. brush it, and it got caught right here. And, uh, yeah, so he actually got a little splinter brushing it with his hand. And then he goes, and he just starts taking the tool now, and he twists it, and he'll demonstrate well, when we get going. He just twists it and uses the fan to blow the sawdust off the work. So um, I thought that was pretty impressive that he came up with that on his own. Oh, yeah, well, hey, Mark, we'll talk about the bike trailer in a minute. So go ahead and uh, safety up again, and um, we'll show a few more minutes of you doing that. Okay. And then it'll be my turn. Get this pit out of here. It was this. Yep. Hang on. Yeah, don't forget to clamp it back down Thanks. because we, we took it off to demonstrate it. Safety first. Okay, Troy does know the clean the work with the fan piece. He called it a pro move. So, oh, I thought that was one of a kind. <laughs> no, apparently other guys have figured it out. But Vance, you're only nine. Troy's like 80 or 85, 90 years old. I don't know how old he is. <laughs> he said many years of carving to teach himself that one. But you figured it out after many like hours of carving. Yes. So, I'm telling you, Troy. Better kiss up to your bosses over there at Arbor Tech. Vance is looking for a sales position once the uh, quarantine's off and you can start shaking hands and kissing babies again. Not babies. <laughs> it's a saying. They're carriers. <laughs> carriers. The other thing Vance knows to do is make sure his cord is, is safe and he's comfortable when he's working. He's not going to trip over anything, so he's always aware of where he is. Show your fan move. Show your um show your fan move, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. There, go in on the side. It's starting to kind of split a little. Yeah, bring that edge up. Yeah, he does need a raise. 
This is part of Vance's education, Peter. He's homeschooled and he comes to the shop about once a week. Yeah, John from Arbor Tech, I was showing him that about holding it down a little lower, but he's still being extra safe right now. Ram's Dragon Art Studio. When Vance was little, we started making these videos and there's a series called Vance Maker. I moved him to his own YouTube channel, all those videos, and they're at Vance Maker, youtube.com slash Vance Maker. And you can see him as young as five welding and stuff, making little projects. There's a dozens of them up there. And some new ones too. I did the best I could to try and get rid of that pit, so I'm gonna yeah. see if it works. Looks good. Looks good. I still so, need to do some cleaning, but I'm just going to see if the pit part is out. Right, that's probably... I think it is out. Yeah, so these are um, these are high high speed steel ends, and they can be like traditional chisels. Um, they're basically like traditional chisels. Yes, uh, I agree that kids should learn how to work with their hands as well as their minds and their hearts. It should all be taught equally. Go. Joe Henderson, the tool is self-contained. It has its own motor that comes with it. It's an adjustable speed. Um, just do the uh, do the tilt. I mean, I think part of the fun is playing it. Go ahead. This doesn't go right. I'm gonna have anger issues. Oh, there's. Look, I can see it right there. There's a little chip right yeah, there. No, getting it's getting caught on. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make that wider. All right, we'll do that real quick, and then we'll wrap this up and get on to other stuff, because uh, it's kind of... <laughs> Vance is turning 10 at the end of this month. Vance and Paul um, Jackman are actually pretty good friends. They went to school together, and uh, they have play dates sometimes, but we haven't been able to have play dates lately. For Paul, because um, you know, we got to keep him six feet away. It's weird having a friend that's younger than you. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear Vance or not, but he said it's weird having a friend that's that much younger than you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead and uh, clean that corner up, and then we're going to do a couple other things. Okay. <laughs> OJ Woodworking Crafts. Here's what I know about getting kids interested in woodworking. Make it relatable to them. If it's like birdhouses and they're not into birds, then they're not going to care. But if you find something that they're, that they're interested in, like if they're, a lot of people say, oh, my kids are only into video games and nothing else. It's like, well, then make a, make something for the video game. Make a, you know, make a wooden controller for the Nintendo or whatever. And these are ways of making connections of the shop to their lives. I wouldn't mind making a wood controller for my Switch. You, That's actually a good idea. We can look into it. No, I could take apart that cheap $20 one that I bought yep. and put the electronics inside. <laughs> Marcus, I made those sawhorses. They're adjustable. They are on pipe clamps. and They, they need some adjusting now. They don't hold as strong as they used to. Uh, there's a video about that on my YouTube channel, but they're perfect for Vance at this, uh, at this height. Okay, so... That's the power chisel, but since this whole weekend is sponsored by Arbor Tech, let me flip this around while I'm talking. Vance, take five, Vance. Yeah. Wait, I oh, need to go sorry, eat Sorry, social distancing. Yeah. Can I go eat some apples? You can go eat some apples, yeah. yes. So, this whole weekend is being sponsored by Arbor Tech. They put it together. They got makers all over the country doing live streams to show off power carving as well as other stuff. And uh, thank you very much, guys, for putting it together. There's a link in my description below and there's also if you just go to arbortechtools.com there's a banner where you can click and see who else is talking if you're unlucky you'll catch one of the 17 hours paul jackman's doing it if you're lucky you'll get someone else so <laughs> but uh so vance and i are doing this one today 
Um, and uh, yeah, it does look pretty good, doesn't it, Troy? And this is now the the only other time he ever used this tool was at the show where we met you, I think, for the first time, Troy, a couple years ago. And um, so he just started messing with it today for the first time, and he's already getting pretty good. Um, so the other tools I wanted to talk about, I mean, obviously, if you've been watching this Arbor Tech stuff, maybe, maybe you're just hip to it because of me, um, but they are probably best known for this tool, which is the, the turbo plane. And it's basically like a handheld planer and you can carve away and sculpt with it. Now, I personally love angle grinders. Um, they're like my favorite tool because I like the sculpting aspect of it. So this stuff is all like, like speaks my language. I like the not having straight lines kind of thing going on. Um, and then another tool that there's that I use a lot is this mini turbo plane, which I just recently acquired and I made that double base, I use this to carve the headstock shapes out and like arrows and shapes. And, and this thing is, is wicked cool. And again, this is something I would let Vance use and he has used the turbo plane. I might, I I've might hold that. off. Yeah, I know. Turbo plane I'd hold off on for a little while. And then they also make, um, actually this is the, what is this called? This is the mini, the mini industrial carver is what that's called. I'm sorry. This is the mini turbo plane and this just attaches to a regular angle grinder. And then they also have this little sander that attaches to a regular angle grinder. So they have, uh, I think these are the only two tools, Troy can correct me, um, this this mini carver and the chisel where they come with their own motor and then everything else just attaches to your regular angle grinder. And you can see you don't need anything fancy. This is a, this is Ryobi when they were blue. That's how old this thing is. This is a $30 angle grinder I bought. I cut the cord off and re-welded <laughs> two cords or re-soldered on new cords a couple times now by accident. And it, it's, it performs great. It's like my, my favorite one, you know. So let's see what's going on in the chat here. Um, so, yeah, so Troy from Arbor Tech is in the chat as well. Some other people, if you have any questions, you can put them in there and they can do their best to um, answer them. Most of this is just making fun of Paul Jackman, I think. So, okay. Now, I'm going to carve real quick. I have this guitar. that I showed in yesterday's chat. Now I'm excited. <laughs> so, this is a guitar I'm making for a client and you'll see I actually have my my YouTube and camera set up because there will be a video about this eventually, but not the whole build, just parts of it. There's a look that we're creating with this guitar. Um, so now I have a CNC that I cut these bodies out on and I have found that the way I like to do it for most of my guitars is I do only 2D cutting on the CNC and then I do like the the belly carve on the back and the arm carve on the front. I do them by hand with the turbo plane because I just find it faster and I can make it look more organic um, and each guitar can kind of have its own feel and, and texture. So I, I can CNC program too and I have but I like to power carve and so I'm just gonna give this guitar a little bit of a sort of curve here for like the arm. And I'm also going to give it what they call like a belly cut here. So when it goes up against your, your gut, it sits good. Here, Vance, maybe uh, you want to be cameraman? The crunching cameraman. Okay, you're going to have to put your ear protection on while I do this. Yep. Are you going to use the chisel? Hey, Izzy. What's going on, man? Um, no, I'm going to use the big turbo plane. And, uh, okay, I'm going to give Vance... You're going to put your hearing protection on, and I'm going to... He's texting me. There you go. So Vance is going to be cameraman for a minute while I quickly power carve this down. I'm going to shove some hearing protection in for me. And now while I use this turbo plane, I'm going to throw some gloves on because this thing throws some pretty big chips, and they kind of sting a little bit. So, Vance, you know to stay back a safe distance. I mean, you can zoom in a little, but you know, you know, I'm going to trust your judgment. Can I zoom? Uh, yeah, it's two fingers on the screen. It's a little tricky, but... Whoa! Yeah, exactly. Oops, I think I just wrecked the live stream. No, did you really? No. So is it live in the corner? Yeah, I know. I just oh, zoomed being... in really far. Oh, I got you. <laughs> you mean you wrecked it visually. <laughs> so I just have to set up this camera, too, for the video. And you know what? Let's record this moment. We are live streaming this on YouTube for a future video. Okay. 
Alrighty. Hey, can I put the camera on the bee for a minute? Yeah, you can call the bee for a minute. Where'd he go? I don't know. The honeybees are such a beautiful day today. He landed on me before, so I was like, ooh, I need to follow him. He's a nice one. Okay, so now watch how, how quick this is. Stand right there and get a nice close up. Yeah, I know. I got a little zoom. Okay. I have the shape roughed in, I'm going to flip to this, flip to this just sanding disc with the kind you'd use for metalworking and just smooth it all out real quick. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that today because this bit or this pad is shot as you can see. So, but that's kind of just wrecked it. So I just kind of, well, that'll all sand off. It's just starting to burn it because it's a little shot. I was just grinding on the truck a few minutes ago with it. But um, yeah, so that's really all there is to it. That'll clean up real nice. Just quickly, I'll sand it with that angle grinder sander and then I'll jump right to like 80 grit sandpaper. Let's do the back belly carve. So what's next? Uh, next is I'm going to do a little bit of a belly cut right here, which will just take a couple minutes as well. Nice. Actually, wait, can I put the tripod down so um, I can get zoom? Yeah, let me try it. You might have to steady it, though, because they're going to be on the table that we're working on. I'm probably going to have to hold it. Yeah, there we go. Because it'll bounce right off the, uh, off the table when I start cutting. You got it? Yep. Okay, just hang on to it. might, when we're not recording, go in. I probably will go in and do a little more, but I don't want to do it while I'm focusing on live streaming and make a mistake. But So I'll probably take a little bit more off there and a little bit more away from here off camera. 
but now we have a three-dimensional guitar in a matter of minutes that was just 2D a few minutes ago. And I do this a lot too when I'm, I just kind of feel it in air guitar. You know. Cool. So I think, good job Vance. Let's see what's coming in for comments here. Yeah, I know you got some like uh, questions to do some stuff with the power carbon and stuff in the power tool. Yeah, that, um, right. So yes, Steve, this does remove a lot of wood quickly. And uh, that's why I'm stopping right now because it's really easy to, to screw up and uh, if I'm not paying attention. Hey, TJ, what's going on, man? So um, with the grinders work on my face wrinkles, I wonder, uh, yeah, they would definitely take care of your face wrinkles, but probably most of your face too. Um, okay, what kind of wood? Oh, that is reclaimed chestnut that I'm carving right now. So it's, um, it's nice. It's actually my favorite wood to work with. And yes, you're good. you're right. It does. It smells beautiful, doesn't it? Um, and you're right, uh, Rams Dragon. That the CNC does take a lot longer because what you have to do is you have to create a a 3D tool path to do that. But uh, however, there are some tricks on the CNC I've learned about fluting tool paths and whatnot that can do that a lot quicker. Um, but like I said, every guitar for me is different when it comes to that. The 2D stuff is all, you know, mostly the same. And I do have some guitars that I've carved full 3D on the CNC. But these, I like to do this by hand. I just feel like it's every guitar has its own way it wants to be sort of done. Uh, let's see, I think I lost Vance. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And if I can't answer them, uh, someone in the chat probably can from Arbor Tech. And uh, I'm trying to just catch up on everything that is going on here. The camera, did Vance do good on the camera? Oh, I see he was zooming a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vance also wanted to, don't worry, Dad. <laughs> Vance, you wanted to show off your trailer, right? Yeah. So this is unrelated to power carving, but grinders scare me. I use one, you know what? Grinders are scary. I hear you. They're loud and they're aggressive. Um, and they used to scare me when I first started using them, but uh, they've quickly become my favorite tool. Um, once I kind of got over that. And I've seen some pretty gnarly stuff happen with them too. So you do have to be aware and pay attention, which is why I don't want to focus too much on that right now while I'm live streaming. Um, just a square hole and show how clean it is. Um, I could, maybe we'll try that near the end. We'll we'll see if we have time to do that. Me versus you. Oh, you, you want to have it? No, we're not going to do that. That'll no, be, I want to try. That might be dangerous, but you want to show off your trailer real quick? TJ's wood shop is saying, or woodworking shop is saying hi. He's uh, he's like one of your biggest fans. TJ. So ahead of TJ. Oh yeah, I remember him. Hi. Nice. Hi to TJ. Get right in your face. So what's the, what's up with this trailer? Um, so I made this trailer like last summer, and I took it out today and cleaned it out mm -hmm. and stuff, and I was towing it around, and I got the jack underneath, and. Pretty nice. One of the wheels is off the ground, so it's basically a teeter totter. And then it's got lights. What's it made out of? Hollow core doors. Five of them. Five hollow core doors. Actually, no, four. I'm not actually sure. I mean, if I'm counting the edges, like it's four if we count the body, but then if we count the rafters and the door in the front. Show how this hinge of yours works. Close the door for me. Yeah, I think your jack is just a little high or the we're on too crooked of a ground. Because it's a little wobbly. But so the frame of this is just a couple pieces of scrap steel. I didn't even measure them. I just welded them together and welded these, these child-sized bike tires on it for Vance. And then he built this whole thing on top of the frame himself. I made a couple cuts for him because I don't let him use the table saw. But yeah, so it's all just holocord doors and lights. And um, I taught him how to weather seal it. We bought a tube of caulk and, and I taught him how to do that with his finger. And like I said, Vance did this all himself. He used a screw gun, staple gun. Um, he even did some... What else did you do to make this? Yeah, you did the caulking, yeah, all the measuring. Some of the cutting, I did most of the cutting for you on your lines that you measured, right? Caulk is messy. Yeah, 
And then we have this little trailer hitch. Like we just totally just, I just threw this together in like minutes. And then <laughs> no, I wanna... welded this on. Yep, that's right. You did the welding for it's that. It's easy. Okay. Yeah, come around. And then, actually, we'll have to take the jack off. Yep. Yeah, table saws scare me more too. <laughs> and that's Vance's trailer. been working on this thing for months and months. This is an electric trike, but we got to fix the battery, so. He's got to pedal it today. I don't know where he gets it. So, Pelly Steve wants to borrow your, your camper to go camping. Tall, it'll work like a charm. <laughs> you hear that? If you're five feet tall, you're good. You can sleep in there. It's <laughs> only five feet long. How tall are you now, Vance? Uh, four eight. Four eight? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. With boots on. I'm <laughs> with... Four six without shoes. <laughs> four six without. Well, no, I'm four eight with boots. I'm four seven with shoes, and no, I'm more like four six and a half, and then I'm four six. Just socks. Wow, Kevin, Kevin Tool, thank you so much. Kevin just tipped us uh, twenty dollars, and it's but it's not for me; it's for you yes. to oh, spend as you want. Yes. So thank Kevin. Thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a video game. A video game? Come on, we're doing woodworking. You're gonna buy a video game? No, I'm gonna buy a light for the trailer. Oh, light for the trailer. That's a good idea. Thank you very much, Kevin. That's very, I very a generous. Bunch of Halloween decorations in it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because the last time you were using the trailer was around Halloween, and then it got kind of. I took it out like a month and a half ago um, because there was no ice, but now it's a nice day, so I can take it out. Nice. Okay, so uh, we did a little bit of power carving. We did a little bit of talking. We showed off your trailer. What else did we want to do today? Mm -hmm. We're here to answer any questions you may have about what Vance is up to, what I'm up to, the truck, power carving, Arbor Tech, trikes. Whatever you have questions about. Mini trucks. Notice that Vance's trike is, I think, bigger than my truck. <laughs> it won't fit in the back. Here, let me... The trailer is probably bigger. Hey, Wesley Treat is in the house. If um, if you don't know who Wesley Treat is, you should definitely go check out his work. And, uh, yes, hopefully Maker Camp will happen this year. Um, I'll be bringing this if it is. That's the goal is to have, a, have it ready for that, for Maker Camp 2020 up in the Catskill Mountains. What you doing, bud? Detaching. Oh, detaching there. Is there any YouTube maker you'd ever like to collab with? Is that question for me or for Vance? That's the real question. Um, probably both. Probably both. How about you? Who do you want? To, who would you like to do a collaboration with someday? Me? Yeah. Um, Paul Jackman and Colby's family. Oh yeah, the Youngs. Yeah. Um, that'd be a great. That actually be really cool to see you do something with the brothers there. Yeah. Yeah, and um. I, uh, I, yes, I have done some collabs. I did one with Paul. Um, I've done a couple others too over the years. Um, is there anyone in particular? I think that if I were to do a collab, I'd want to do something like today um, with someone who is in a totally different space than me. Like, like someone who doesn't necessarily, either they make with different materials or they don't make at all, like make something for them. Uh, that would be interesting to me. Uh, will Vance get the mini truck when he is able to drive? He's gonna have to get his own mini truck. Yeah, but mine will be electric. 
<laughs> that is the dream. The dream is to electrify to electrify a mini truck. I want to get another one and electrify it, but I got between that and the trike and this, I got enough going on right now. Um, yeah, Vanso, when he gets a little bit older, I'll probably teach him to drive because it's a manual transmission, and I think it's important for everybody to learn how to drive a manual transmission. So he'll learn in this. I mean, what's great about it is it is all the drive. I can teach him how to field somewhere too. I think someone of his intellect would intimidate a Jackman works. You know, if you, <laughs> hang on, I lost you. Uh, maker mechanic. If you go on youtube.com slash Vance maker, that's Vance's channel. We have this ongoing gag where Vance gets a new intern. It started with my mom. I think was the first one. No, it started with Papa Bud and then um, Grandma Granite. Yeah. Then Jimmy, then Paul. Yeah, and then me too. We did one too. So there's a whole series of Vance bossing around interns, and Jimmy Duress is in one of them as well as Paul Jackman. Uh, I would highly recommend checking those out. So any new projects that you are working on, Tim? It's boss baby. Um, yes. Boss maker. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Steve. Uh, some new projects I am working on is obviously this truck, which is a bazillion projects. You can see uh, the tailgate I've been welding together. Um, I talked about that a little bit yesterday. There's a, a winch up top, so it lowers it down, and I've ordered some legs that are going to hold it. And then I'm going to sheet the outside and put a floor on the inside, maybe put some lights in it. I got all the other interior of the truck to do and all the signage. So the truck is a big part of it. I've also got this guitar I'm working on for a client right now. I got another guitar order just came in. Mostly guitars coming in right now, which is great. You know, here, I'm going to flip this around. I just noticed. What did you just notice? Come where I'm sitting. Yeah. This looks like the long intestine going to the stomach. Yes, yes, it does. Absolutely. Um, okay, where were we? Questions. Any new projects? I need to get one of those one power carvers or one of the Vances. They're, they're both coming handy. <laughs> um, this tech at fireman. Hopefully, I'll see you up in the Catskills too. Um, you have made his own mini truck by then. Yes, perhaps. Hey, Vance, where did you get your trike? We got that trike. That's my second trike. And we got him from Dave Gagne of Elm City Vintage on YouTube. He is a bike mechanic by day. And uh, he just has just thousands and thousands of, like, he has thousands of everything, I guess. But um, Dave, Dave likes to collect. But so that was, um, uh, the, I did an electric trike series a while back. That was left over from that. Um, Dave's a super cool guy. He's a local guy. And he's a good friend of mine. So Elm City Vintage, go check him out. Uh, ever thought of making a copy carver? Oh, you mean like a like a Panther router? Um, I have a CNC, so I have no need for that. If that's what you mean, but um, but no, I haven't really thought about that. I was messing around trying to make like an etch a sketch type thing once. Uh, well, yeah, you for right. You did get an etch a sketch for Christmas. Uh, I was thinking about I'm making. I'd love to come in here out of the sun. You want to come with me, buddy? Um, yeah, let's take a little break. Um, yeah, I was thinking about making a, uh, uh, like a, a sort of hand-driven CNC. I thought that'd be kind of fun to do, but I never, I never got around to it. And then I got a CNC, a regular one. So, um, where were we? Just put the trike motor in the truck. Very funny. Uh, I would be very interested in climbing on an instrument with you someday, Miles. That'd be fun. Maybe something really unique. Uh, this is Miles McNally Luthieri. Uh, he's like a real, I, I just make guitars. This guy's like a real luthier. You should go check out his work on Instagram as well as on, on uh, YouTube. Uh, I, see, I see you more on Instagram. I don't know if that's just me, but um, like uh, the amazing mandolin he's working on right now, like the real way, not like the, hey, look at this stuff I pull out of a dumpster way. <laughs> see what else we got. Um, project cars are putting a two rotor wankel in their mini truck with a rocket bunny body kit. Interesting. I have not heard of any of those words together. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Clark. I'm glad to hear that. And, you know, I hear 
American Express is actually being very forgiving with paying right now because of uh, the current situation. So you might not even have to pay for those for a little while. Uh, yeah, the truck is cool. I don't know if you've seen, but I have that that big step van out there I'm working on. There's a whole video series about that. Vance has been involved a little bit too. We were just pussing around with it this morning. And um, and uh, yeah, just stay tuned for that. There's a lot to happen on that, a lot of breakout projects and you know some some vlogging and some work and stuff. It's uh, it's kind of my summer project that I did get an early start on. Great project. Uh, yes. Um, Brian from Arbitrack is saying that the turbo plane would be a great product. So I 100% agree. If you want to start working with power carving or um, the turbo plane is, is almost essential. <laughs> like it's the, it's moves a lot of wood quickly. Um, and it gets you used to the idea, like to just go grinder and to start trying to do really like detailed stuff um, is, is different. It's, you know, you hold it, it's different than holding like a, a rotary tool or like a Dremel tool or something. Um, so definitely starting with the, <laughs> looking good, but starting with the, the turbo plane is a I'm way showing to showing off our hats that we got left. Oh yeah. Mill supply. Yeah. Mill supply is um, going to be helping out with the truck a little bit. They, they make truck parts and uh, they sent us these cool hats. I'm wearing my Arbitech hat today, but these Vance's, are my favorite hats. So this is Vance's favorite hat right now. It fits me perfect. Let's see. It's good. Here, show, show the camera. Wow. Look at that. All that Justin Bieber hair in that hat. <laughs> uh, yeah, Turbo Plane, definitely a great place to start. Although the chisel is really cool. It's like a, a different way of doing it, but it's also a bigger expense. So the Turbo Plane is another way with a little less expense out of pocket. Um, hammerhead Snake. I have no idea what that means. Uh, large intestine. Yep. There. Oh, um, I get it, Peter. You're saying that because you, you were saying the large intestine. Yeah. And you could make an antacid commercial and show the marble as like the indigestion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can make the marble look like an aspirin pill. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And then you could put like baking soda and uh, vinegar. So the, 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 the marble could be baking soda and you have vinegar in the, in the, the pocket. And you roll a baking soda marble in and as soon as it hits the vinegar, it goes. Yep. That would actually be cool. That would actually be really cool. What's Vance's next project? Vance, tell him about your next project that you still haven't finished editing. Um, Quarantine Cornhole. <laughs> quarantine cornhole. I just thought of that now. That's a great name. No, it's actually that's what the title of the video should be honest. Oh, 100 percent Quarantine 100%. Cornhole. So Vance wanted to make a video for his channel, which is youtube.com slash Vance Maker. And uh we used to do a lot of them and uh he hasn't been doing as many because you know we get older and we haven't been doing any. Well no, you did well you did the last one did was Halloween. Or was that last year? That was last Halloween. Holy cow. Oh no, then we did one for Maker Made CNC though, the three D printer. That, that yeah, that January was January or December? Just, that was last December. Uh, yeah, like, December of 2019. Right, like four months ago. Um, yes, so Vance wanted to do one on his own. And so he's working on one right now where he shot it. In the past, it was always like I would give him a project as like a learning experience. And but, he would record me. And I would videotape it and I would edit it and I'd put it together. But Vance is working on one right now where he took, he basically just took my camera and then he just... I didn't take it. You gave it to me. And he just went off and did it. And um and so now, and now I'm editing it. Yeah, you know, so he's editing it and it's about twenty minutes long right now, so we're just trying to get it a little shorter. Nineteen and a half. I got it down to that. Vance does know what the word pedantic means. Yeah. <laughs> Remember? When I said it's about twenty minutes and you said, Well, actually Well, actually it's nineteen and a half minutes. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Um Elm City Vintage is good people. Yes. Uh, it's like a good fun video to make a hand-driven copy cover. It would be interesting to see that. Um, yeah, for me, I, I have a, I have a CNC and, uh, you know, it, like, I don't, you know, it's, it's actually kind of a good point. Like, I don't, I don't make videos for a living. It's become part of my income. Uh, and thanks to companies like Arbor Tech, it makes it easier for me to do some of these crazier things. But really at the end of the day, I still make things. So, um, like I do make videos, you know, I make things for videos like this, um, like this. Can I go back to power carving? Yeah, you can go back to power carving. I want to finish that. Like I made a video, I had this idea for this thumb plate instrument a while back. And so I made that like for sort of experiment with the idea. I unplugged you, buddy. So you'll have to plug it back in and make sure you.
your, your cans on. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is, uh, you know, increasingly becoming more of my income. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with the camera here. Um, but yeah, it's like to, to go and to make something like a carver like that. Like I just, I don't make that kind of income on YouTube to where I can just go and do that. Um, all right. Multiple coats of tunnel and glass finish. What would you recommend to buff it or leave it as it dries? Oh, Kevin, good question. Um, tongue oil for a gloss finish. You know, if you just keep buffing tongue oil on like layer after layer after layer, it really gets a nice finish. I like tongue oil for that. You don't have to set up a spray booth and um, it's not super <laughs> in the power carving the back end. Um, that might work really well. You know, um, geez, I have a base. One of the first instruments I made, I did a tongue oil finish on and I did that. Like I put like a dozen coats or more on it. And, um, I wasn't too happy with it at first, but then like I waited a week and I was like, Oh, and now 20 years later, it's like, it's money. It's a great idea to do it. Um, but yeah, once you really want to let it sit for a while before you go in to start buffing it, it's like, you feel like it's dry, but it's not cured. I'm not a, not a real expert on that, but that's kind of what I know. Well, hair, should I go with the Vance too? Uh, Wesley, I think you should 100% cut your hair exactly like Vance makeup. Uh, what we, what would Vance buy with a very full tip jar? Uh, I see someone. Was that you that just pulled money? Money? Um, uh, God only knows. We'll find out though. <laughs> Apparently, because the people are being very generous to my son, it's, it's very special. Um, yes, Miles is usually on Instagram. I'm trying to just catch up. Miles Luthier is usually on Instagram, and I can show you the Avid Bench Top CNC Colby. This is my. It's under a bunch of stuff right now because it's not getting used. This is my first Avid CNC. It is a two by three bench top model. And it's been replaced by a two by four that can expand out, which will expand out to eight foot eventually. But this machine is uh, is awesome. It can do almost everything this machine can do. It's, it's been a great, a great, great machine. Um, yeah, what the, the Anarcho, uh, Anarcho Luthier is great name is saying is that he's always just wiped on tongue oil and doesn't really buff it. And that's, yeah, wipe the excess off. That's kind of what I was trying to say, but you said it better. Um, you got a little sway. I do have a little sway, a little mini me. He is definitely my son. Turbo plane. Oh, congratulations. You just ordered the turbo plane and the contour sander. Very cool. Uh, the contour sander is great. It takes a little bit of getting used to because at first you're like thinking like, oh, it's on an angle grinder. It should be aggressive. But it's not aggressive. It's um, it's it's pretty. Uh, it's you can get a pretty nice finish with it. TJ's woodworking. You just tipped us. Wow! Thank you so much. It's very generous. And this, all the tip money is going to Vance today. Um, while I do do this for a living, uh, uh, I I know that that's why you're tipping. So this is legitimately going to Vance. He's probably going to waste it on video games. <laughs> Uh, hey, thanks, Jose. I'm, I'm glad that you are experimenting with reclaim materials. There's so many options out there. Of, you know, a lot of the stuff I build, like if I had to buy the stuff for it, I wouldn't build it. You know, it would be like too much. What tools do you use to radius your fretboards? Excellent question, Joe. I use the CNC. I 3D carve them, but you can buy, um, this was from Stu Mac. This is a 12 inch radius sanding block and you can get someone with a cnc to make one of these or you can just buy these from guitar supplies and it's just a radius sanding block some guys actually make their own and they make them bigger so they hold the neck and they slide the neck along the block but it's six and one half dozen the other um this is all you need is just a radius sanding block and they're not that expensive make something advanced and call it the corona crusher yeah we're trying to crush corona here buddy that's for sure um, yeah, Kevin and TJ, thank you very much for your generosity. That is, is very kind. It's a little overwhelming, honestly. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think Wesley Treat could totally pull off Vance's haircut. Those magnetic earbuds attract iron dust. Yes, they do. Um, you can see I was welding and, and grinding and stuff just the other day, and you can see that they, all that right there. The brush is off enough. It's all gone. <laughs> Good eye. 
Um, so Tim, how steep is the learning curve on that CNC machine? It looks really daunting to me. You know, CNC, I was supposed to go to England and go to Maker Central in May, but obviously everything's canceled. Um, and I was going to do a, a CNC class on stage for people just like you, Steve, uh, to just show that you can do it. Because everybody that looks at a machine like that, they, they say things like, like oh, it's, if you don't know what it is, it's daunting, right? It's nothing. But what's daunting, it isn't that. That's not what's scary to you. If, I, if I'm correct, it's this part that's scary. Uh, the machine itself is just a router and some acne thread, and it's all like any other machine in your, in your shop, right? It's just parts that move that need oil in certain places and need to be tight in other places. Um, the scary part is knowing how to control it on the computer. And you can do it. I don't. I know maybe 20% of what a CNC machine can do, maybe 30% now, right? Um, and there are people that know much, much more. But you don't have to know all of it at once. It's just like any other toy. The first time you get a table saw, you cut a straight line on it. And the next thing you know, you're Izzy Swan, you're making bowling balls, you know? <laughs> It's like it, it is a little intimidating at first, and the learning curve is a little steep if you're not computer savvy. But I do think anybody can do it, and with all the resources that are out there on YouTube and stuff, um, it is you know something that can be done. The, the oil gets better, as I said. That's true about tongue oil; it does get better, as it says. Um, what do you think about Bob's B Bender guitar build? And will you be working on one of your own? The, yeah, the B Bender is a cool thing. What I like about it is. Um, that it's very physical, you know. Um, it's it's like a country thing, and some like it's been around for a little while. I've never had any interest in building one myself, um, but you know, if someone asks me to make one, I will. Uh, I would be interested in doing something like that. It'd be kind of cool to have six motions that one for each string. So you know, there's like the B, and then like I don't know if there's like some. Like, it'd be kind of cool to have multiple motions. I don't know. Um, and to slap an Arbitech tool on the CNC. That would be interesting to do, to strap a, uh, you know what, the contour sander, because I've often wanted to find some way to sand with the CNC. But to put the contour sander on the, on the CNC at a slight angle and just draw a path and just sand with it. <laughs> would you do a fiberglass or a carbon instrument? I, I'm particularly interested in carbon fiber, um, but... Uh, I don't see myself doing it anytime too soon. What interests me about it is it's cool looking, but also uh, I just heard this report lately about making, there's a, a company that's working on making carbon fiber by actually pulling the carbon out of the atmosphere and sequestering it in the fiber. So it makes carbon fiber now green. Uh, and so I like, I do have this eco-friendly like bent to everything I do in carbon fiber, I would never really consider being eco-friendly, but if it's actually sequestering carbon out of the atmosphere, then it becomes eco-friendly and that's super interesting to me. Uh, I radius my boards by hand. This is Miles McNally Luthier. Again, uh, Miles Luthier, uh, Miles McNally Luthier is the full name. If you have questions about like guitar making, like he probably has a real answer and not mine. Oh, just throw it on the CNC answer. <laughs> Uh, I radius my boards by hand, planing each edge and finishing with a sanding block. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's not a bad idea to take a little more meat off first before you go right to the sander. Um, radius blocks are also not hard to make. I bought a few, but made the rest of them. That is very true. Even without a CNC, you can make that by hand. And Because, um, you know, in general, when you're sanding, all you're doing is transferring a shape. So you can make, if you want to make any kind of shape you want and just transfer that onto your guitar. That's all there is to it. It's just transferring shapes, you know. I'll remember to close chat and smash like so more people find Tim's channel. Yeah, go ahead. S smash that. What am I supposed to say? I don't even know all the... Smash like epic. Who's that bass guy? <laughs> Making an Italian accent. Um, Tim, how many guitars have you made? What's that, Vance? Smash the subscribe button. Smash the subscribe button. That's what I'm supposed to say. Thank you, Vance. Vance watches a lot of like Dude Perfect and stuff like that. Uh, how many guitars have I made? I have no idea. Uh, definitely pushing 100 at this point, I guess. But not all of them have been successes. Some of them have been taken apart and rebuilt as other guitars and, and whatnot, too. You know, there's a learning curve. Uh, Izzy. I did say I did say balls, Izzy. Bowling balls. You have bowling balls, Izzy Swan. The craziest and most challenging guitar you've ever built. Um, this one right here. 
this this was one of them um which is in a little disarray but so this was talking about power carving this is 3d carved on the cnc like i did all of this carving by cnc but then the polishing and stuff and and the materials um are not super pleasant to work with uh so i um <laughs> i got another one that i'm planning that that might kind of even push this this idea a little further we'll see i'm coming up near the end of my time here i'm going to wrap this up in a few minutes uh i'm going to try to get through the rest of the questions that are there before i go i want to thank arbor tech again for putting this global maker fest on and remember it's not just on my channel it is all over youtube if you go to the link in my description or just go to arbortechtools.com there's a list of other people doing other things um who's up after me if on arbor Tech's channel after me is Wait, you um, want to come see the marble thing? Yeah, I'll, I'll come on a sec. Tracy and Katrina are on the Arbor Tech channel following me as part of this event. Uh, Vance has got the marble. Is it working, Vance? What? Is it working better? I don't know. <laughs> you want to find out? We're going to go find out. I'm just give me one second. I'll be right there. I'm trying to get through these questions. You can totally stand with the CNC, and it's awesome. I bet, yeah, of course you've done that, Izzy. <laughs> What's your opinion about making... Like a string butler uh, making strings not angled immediately through the head nut. You mean like the the downward pressure behind it? I put um, I don't know if I'm reading that correctly, but I put um, this um, this style um, Floyd Rose style downward string pressure on almost all my guitars that have well all the ones that have flat headstocks. Uh, you really only need them for these longer strings down here like sometimes there'll be two or, or four but i i just push down all six of them just i think it looks better and it makes it easier you know um let's go check out carbon fiber yeah it's pretty interesting stuff any drum projects in the future um i have some ideas for some drums oh yellow mug thank you so much for vance's tool collection it's very kind of you um i have uh, i have some drum projects that i'm planning um but i'm very busy with all of the other stuff i had it go all the way i'm very busy with the truck though so whoa oh no there it is oh, airplane <laughs> yeah i have i do have some drum plans um and uh it's um uh, once I get some other stuff under control, I got to put it to the back seat. Uh, Gwen is is yeah, she's figured out the teaching thing. She's getting definitely better at it, and uh, and they've settled into their their routine. It's this brave new world that we're all living in, and make it a little slower. Steve, thank you for doing this. And this is what your ArborTech power chisel has created. A long intestine. A long intestine. Oh, you have a bad belly. Try marbles. Yep. Might choke. Oh. Wait, it's, it's, it's almost. I got to tilt it this way and have it left. See, I think, I think you're going to always have to tilt it back and forth and kind of drive it. Unless it gets really deep. Wait, I can't there we go. Nope, oh, give it a little. Wait, right here. listen. Yeah, I hear the ice cream truck. Break angle. Breaking news. There's an ice cream truck. Try and just drive it down. Like, give it little... Oh, that was... I need a driving to the last thing. Dang it. Very funny, Peter. Here it is. So, Izzy, Izzy said great job, Vance, but he's not too sure about me. There you go. There you go. Nice. I made it to the stomach. That's awesome. You made. You got the the antacid to the stomach, and now everybody's belly feels okay, better. I don't think I'm giving this to Joey because it doesn't work. Go 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 go. Make it. No, dang it. Go go go. Go go. Shoot. Yes. Nice. Where's where the uh, little? Try the little marble. Okay. I don't think it's gonna handle the bomb. Um, but it's smaller, so we had two different sizes. We had these little tiny marbles because my original idea was to put this plexiglass over it, and we thought we could carve it deep enough for the little marble. It's heavier, though. 
It puts oh, the back yeah. down. Well, the little marble can't be heavier. No, I mean, it just put the back down. Yeah. Wait, I need to give it like a little... Maybe that's too yeah, much. Yeah, too much. Okay, I caught it. Wait, I hear an ice cream truck. Don't worry about the ice cream truck. We're social distancing away from the ice cream truck. No, seriously, why would the... I, that's not essential, is it? No, the, the ice cream truck is not... Well... I don't know. Liquor stores, ice cream trucks. <laughs> we gotta stay human, you know? <laughs> the big marble works better. It seems to be a little a little smoother rolling. Break angle in the terms of the angle at which the neck leans from the body or the headstock leans from the neck. Um, right on. So... Um, yeah, I do. I do a lot of guitars that have uh, flat necks. It just like I guess like Stratcher, like that, where it just kind of goes in flat. Um, the 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 break angle of the neck into the body. Uh, if I'm using a two piece bridge, I will I will put it because then it kind of has to. Like actually, I have one right over here. I'm working on. So you can see like this guitar. That's just going in straight because it has a hard tail bridge. So I just run the string straight and it has a straight head. So I put the back pressure, but then you can see these guitars over here. This is what I make, but you can see it has the, the head angled backwards and the neck goes, you know, slants into the body. And then this electric guitar here I did make and there's a slight break angle on the neck into the body so I can get over that bridge and have back tension for the tremolo to work. Uh, this one has a flat head stock. So this is, I've been experimenting with, um, uh, headstocks like that, uh, I still need to do some twang on it. So I can just have the angle of the strings going down like it's a slanted headstock, but still be flat. So I'm not wasting as much wood or doing as many maneuvers to cut, um, to, to, you know, to cut a, uh, and, and re-glue it on. So this way I can use just a one inch thick piece of wood, but then get that angle string behind the nut there that I, that I like. And I happen to have a whole bunch of those tuners I got for free, so <laughs> that helps. <laughs> oh, Wesley, thank you very much, man. That's that's very very. Cool. I, I'm humbled by all the people uh, donating to this. Um, so here's a thought I had. I know I'm over. I'm a sweet money. Yeah, the marble track's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up in a minute. Uh, thanks TJ. I'll see you later. You're one of my number one fans. I appreciate all your support. Um, trouble with the strings, the angle. Uh, no, uh, Miles, so far I have no problem with, uh, with any of them. Like I do put the, um, if, if the head's flat, I, I put the, um, you know, the, the back pressure with the, the Floyd Rose thing. But I, I wanted to say that, um, and I'll thank Arbitech again. I'm going to wrap this up now and I'll, I'll go find Van so he can say goodbye. I, um, years and years ago, I had this idea to do this sort of a live stream thing. It was, I actually even started a YouTube channel for it, but I never really announced it because it just didn't happen. It was, um, the idea was called the Maker Hive Mind. And it was, um, to just basically have a half hour conversation where I'd like pick up some, some piece of reclaim stuff, like, what can we make out of this? And just sort of have this conversation and brainstorm. And, um, I'm thinking about bringing that, uh, to life during this situation because everybody's kind of maybe getting a little brain soft watching Netflix and stuck at home. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that too. Maybe people watching this later, cause I know it's starting to dwindle down now. Um, but I've been having a blast way more fun than I thought I would doing this live stream. And so I think I might uh, do some more of it. So let me know your thoughts on that. If you have any interest in me continuing to do these live streams for at least the foreseeable future, while we're stuck in this sort of social isolation. Um, okay. We're going to wrap it up for now. I don't know if the phone can hear, but I hear it. No. Ice cream truck, yep. No, 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 you don't get it. We have an ice cream truck. Oh, we... We got competition. We got competition, bro. Yeah, my, I got no ice cream in there. Okay, we're going to hang up. Guitar scream. Guitar, yeah. So we're going to hang up now, Vince. You want to say bye to everybody? Guitar scream. Uh, bye to everybody. See ya. Yes, and thank you all very much. All right. Thanks well. for the $20 tip. Yes, you had more than that. It's up to forty-seven dollars now. For me? Yeah. Not for you. No, you for earned me. it. You earned it, buddy. Yes, thank you all. That's a that's a two video games maybe.
Well, I should. Oh, video games are really expensive. I know. I'm still stuck in the 80s. I think it's two video games. What do I know? It's like $60 for a Mario game. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you all very much. I'm hanging up for real. Let's go. Bye. Bye. And I think we push this X. Yep. Yep.